going on driveway gang welcome back to the channel today we're out here in our beautiful driveway and it's basically dusk right now uh 86 degrees out today it was pretty warm and i was out driving the eclipse around and we sprung up another leak so basically uh driving around with the fans on we are blowing the fan fuse which is this right here this 20 amp fuse uh, we're gonna try to mitigate this today if we can this one right here keeps popping and it's kind of driving me nuts because I keep getting stuck in stop and go traffic every day and we don't want to overheat obviously anyway, so uh, today we're gonna fix this beautiful popping fuse these spall fans that we've installed uh, there's two slim fans here and what I did was I wired them in to the stock wire harness right here with the stock plug and this is ugly right now because I just had to pull it apart. They just keep popping this fuse, and I thought maybe there was a wire that was bad or something, or maybe there was something rubbed rubbed uh, the insulation off, and there's like bare wire grounding out someplace, and that wasn't the case. So there's a stock plug here, and there's also another stock plug, but it's way down there under the coolant overflow jug. And basically, what I'm going to try to do today is wire a relay. An RL4440 amp relay because they didn't have any 30s. I can replace this later if I want, but this is a mountable relay. I'm going to stick this probably off to the side here someplace, or maybe if I can find a place, maybe that bolt right there, I'll replace that 10 mil and have it set off the fuse box. And we're going to build a little loom to use a relay to trigger this uh, fan system to turn on. We're still going to let the ECU control it when it hits 210. It should trigger the fans on. But we're gonna basically give it more power, more constant power, in a source that's not gonna keep popping. So we're gonna use this relay. Uh, we've also got an inline fuse that we're gonna hook up so that nothing gets melted or hurt. And we're gonna pull power from, when we did our battery delete down here, we have a power block. So we're gonna steal power off of this thing. Sorry for the dark shot, but that's where we're gonna start. And so cooling has been a lot better since the last time I was out here. Um, driving, I haven't overheated or gotten past probably 210. The fans only come on once in a while unless you're in stop and go. And the ducting is helping out. But we keep popping fuses. So first things first, we've got to make a plan of attack here. Figure out how much wire I'm going to need. And I'm going to show you guys how to wire a relay in to turn your fans on off of 12-volt power. So we've so got ourselves some rolls. I've got a black roll and a red wire, 14-gauge wire. Uh, we've got our relay right here. We've got our inline fuse, we've got some uh, connectors and crimpers, some strippers, some wire insulation, and we're going to go through all this step by step and try to get this thing wired in. The fans, uh, there's two wires coming out of these spall fans, so one of them, the ground, we're actually going to ground a chassis on both fans, and I think I'm going to make a line that comes off to the side and grounds right here where my uh, ECM link MAF cable grounds out to and use that same ground to ground fans. Or maybe I'll find another one. There's a couple of bolt holes that are down here. I got one right here. I can fit a M10 by 125, I believe, in there. So I'm gonna snip some wire off and start laying this out. First things first, we've got our wires all cleaned off, our connections at least. These are where I spliced in after I had some issues. Uh, if you guys are doing this and you're just getting rid of the stock fans and going in, uh, the two blue wires are your hot wires and on the stock plug the two black are the ground side. This is on the passenger side fan. 
and the driver's side fan you pair up the blue and green wire for the hot side and the black and yellow are the ground side so in case you're ever messing with that and you need some uh, well you need a wiring diagram I've covered this before but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of these plugs all together I'll stick these in a box and save them if I ever need to use them again we're gonna use some electrical butt connectors to retain the ability to take the radiator out with the fans attached and we're not gonna have to worry about taking wiring apart or cutting wires or anything like that so I'm gonna get rid of these two plugs this one here and this one here stick these off to the side strip these wires and the first thing we're gonna do is mate up a couple of insulated connections we're gonna use two male and two female connections I'm gonna snip those off I'm gonna get those made then we're gonna figure out where exactly we want to mount this I'm thinking that this little relay here would look fine and it would still be accessible if I have it kind of tucked off to the side over here and just have some nice neat black wiring run along the inner side of the fender down to the bottom down here to where I'm going to put both of the fan connections on this side. And then we'll just have one power wire routed out underneath this to the back to the power. Okay guys, so it got a little dark out here, brought some light out. This is what I've got so far. I've got two female connectors coming off. They're kind of dog-legged in. This is like one big piece right here. It's uh, let me see if I can lay this down for you. There, it kind of looks like a, a, a T. So this red wire end is gonna feed down and these two ends on the right are gonna connect into the fan itself both the left and the right fan because we're both going to relay from one power source and one relay instead of two and I've done the same with the ground side I've got male and female connectors attached to both the ends of this except the far end is now a ring terminal which is heat shrinked and insulated soldered also and that's going to connect over here someplace to a bolt that goes into the body so I'm going to make a loom that goes across with all right this stuff right here and I'll have two breakouts one for the ground and one for the power that come out of the sides of this and this will wrap everything back up nice and tight going in to where we mount our relay so the end of this power wire that splits off is going to have a quarter inch spade connector on it and that's going to connect to one of the pins of our mounted relay we're not going to get into wiring that part up yet First, we gotta make this loom, so I'm gonna do that real fast. I'll see you guys in a minute.
boys, it's the next day. Wanted to throw you guys a quick update. I actually had to pull this harness back out, the one that we made last night. And if you see on the end of it here, I added one more little extension. And this is gonna go along the bottom of the radiator. And these uh, plug ends, actually I gotta add a connector to this side still, but basically that new black line that's there is gonna go across and it's gonna tie into this. This is the stock fan plug on this side. And I used the two positive wires and joined them into one connection. And I'm gonna plug this into the stock harness that's over here. And that's gonna be my signal for these fans to turn on at that relay, as opposed to jumping the fuse box. I did look online, I found some pinouts and you can go to the ECU, you can use your EGR contact to ground if you want. I've got this set up a little bit differently. We're pulling power from 12 volt constant and switching it using the same relay that controls the regular fans over here. Now, I did the high and low pin, not the grounds on this plug. That way the ECU can still turn the fans on on the radiator when it gets too hot. And the AC fan still comes on when you hit the switch, if you turn your air conditioning on rather. And also I have both of these fans together now. They're tied in. I jumped them from this relay, the center post, to this relay, the center post. So this is the radiator fan and condenser fan high. So every time the ECU turns on the fans through the stock plug, it will send the signal over to this relay and it will close the circuit connecting 12 volt constant power to the fans. So that way we're not gonna be blowing this fuse anymore. Okay, so I've got my little harness made with my breakout points on it. I've got two on the end to go to the driver's side fan. These two split off. I'm gonna probably just tape the two of these up so they look a little neater. And these go to the passenger side fan. All right, so we've got this wiring harness all put together. We are going to make our battery connection from our breakout back there, which is gonna go to pin 30 on our relay. And then pin 87 is going to go to the fans with this female spade connector. So I've got my new wiring just roughly set in here. Um, let's see if I can pull it out for you. This is the wire going to the new loom. The loom is down here on the bottom, hidden out of view. I'm gonna tuck it all down here. Those are the wires for the fan that are sticking out the bottom of the uh, back of the motor. They kind of go that direction. But I did find, let me see if I can get a light and show you, a free bolt. Let's see. Now you can kind of see it. It is right there. So that is the bolt that we put the ring on, the ring terminal, and we're going to put the relay right over here. Let me get this light out of the way. Let's see if I can show you guys. So I'm going to mount this right there in the corner and what was there before was the uh, GM MAF cable ground so I'm gonna put that behind this bolt here tucked behind all right so I've been at it for a few minutes now uh, I've made my wire to go from the battery straight over to the bottom of the relay on this end it's a female spade connector I almost forgot I had to add my fuse which is in line here. I put a 30 amp uh, small fuse inside of this and the ring terminal. This is going to go to the breakout connection in the battery. Well, constant 12 volt power down there. And here we have our relay. Now, if you look at the relay, we have a short tail with another ring terminal on it. And that is going to be pin 85, I believe. And you just hook that one up to ground. So basically, I'm going to loop that back around the back side here and go through that center hole where I mount it to the chassis. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. So that's going to loop back around like that. And that's going to get mounted right over there where that hole is above it. And that's going to ground the relay. Then I have my other pins down here. Uh, we have 30, which gets the power from the battery, which is fused. We have pin 85, which gets put to ground, chassis ground. We have 87, which goes to the fans. And then lastly, we have 86, 
which is going to go to our signal to triggle, triggle, <laughs> to trigger on the fan system. And that's what she looks like. I just got to connect the one. I just have to connect the last one that goes to the fans themselves. This will be the one in the front. I'm leaving that one to the last. That's actually hanging out right there. So I'm going to get this thing mounted up. I have to put the power on real fast and feed the wires nice and neatly underneath. And I think we'll be all set to give this a try. So I'll be back. All right, guys, I wanted to show you this real fast. You can see this thing's blowing around a little bit. My battery's almost dead in my car. I got to jump start it, but I got everything put away. I've got my plug right here. All the wiring is tucked right across the bottom of the radiator. The loom comes up around this bottom corner. The ground ring terminal goes right here. And it loops back and gets tucked away right there to this relay. Uh, my jumper wire going from the second relay center pin to the fifth relay center pin is jumping the AC and the radiator fan at the same time. Uh, in link, I have the fans turned off, but this is with the air conditioning button turned on. So now everything should work as it's supposed to. The ECU should trigger the fans on when the engine temp gets to 210. Um, it's 206, I believe, with the uh, stock 2G ECU, but the 95 2G ECU starts at 210. ECU, I ran my trigger wire through the loom back over here to the stock plug on the driver's side. And I just used the power from the blue with white stripe and the blue with, no, oh, it's blue with white stripe and solid blue. It's these two wires, the first two, this blue one, and then below is the blue with white stripe wire. The grounds are terminated right there. Uh, but yeah, everything seems like it's fine right now. Everything should work as it did before. I can let the ECU kick the fans on. Both of them are gonna fire up now every single time. I'm not gonna blow a fuse and I'm hoping this thing stays nice and cool and I don't have to worry about chasing down 30 amperes or 20 amperes anymore. So also don't forget to check out our store. We've got a new domain. It's todaysprojectguide.com. If you want to pick up some stickers or a t-shirt or something like that, we have a ton of different merch on there. Uh, we've got the new driveway gang stickers on for $7.99. If you guys want to pick one of those up, it helps support the channel and we can keep videos coming to you guys as soon as possible. Anyways, guys, take care. We'll see you in the next one.